It's UPB on this Tuesday, November 10, 2015. S&P 500 futures closed at their highs of the session. Look at that. After starting the day weaker, and if you look, the VIX started off higher and sold off pretty much throughout the session. I was talking about this, especially in the chat room during lunchtime, how the VIX was down almost 3% at this area here, and that that was pointing to higher stock prices. Could we've seen this, especially uh, the last couple months if we moved off our lows in September, where the VIX starts to lag and it you know gives an indication of where the market's gonna head into the afternoon. And there you go, we had these massive spikes. One spike late in the session to get us back up just at session highs. We had a lot of spikes along the way. Lots of green candles out of nowhere. Hey, if you you know, instead of buying it slow and steady, just buy it all at once. Hey, hey, why not? When every central bank in the world is trying to manipulate their currency lower and uh, manipulate asset prices higher. <laughs> can't lose in the stock market, right? <laughs> so let's get rid of this study here, and you can see S&P 500 futures continue to hold on to the gains that we saw uh, late in the trading day. But if you look, longer term, we're back at the prices, and that's where we found resistance uh, after the Federal Reserve uh, expectation for a rate hike changed on Friday. Back in September, the start of October, this uh, rally started on the you know on the heels of hey you know what the jobs report wasn't that good in October October second we continued this rally off the lows on the expectation hey rates aren't going to rise this year the not the Federal Reserve is not going to do anything and then we had the jobs report that was just robust uh, on Friday and we've been pulling back today it was a, a nice little recovery uh, but. We are pulling back. Are we gonna, is this something more of a, a dramatic pullback that we're going to see? Or is it just going to consolidate here for the next month or two before the market makes up its mind, moves to new record highs, or pulls back? We visit the October, September, August lows here. Something to keep in mind. Another thing that's probably going to lead the markets, the U.S. dollar index. Look at the breakout. I was talking about this wonderful breakout pattern. And I was talking about this breakout here and here and here. Look at all these wonderful patterns, especially this one at the start of the year. You can go back to stock twits to blog at optionmillionaires.com. I was talking about this breakout. Well, look at this. This is a similar pattern right here. Very similar pattern, except on a longer term scale, which to me makes it more uh, reliable. And so we've, we've broken out of it. Look at this beautiful pattern. We have broken out of to the upside. We're heading up to 100. If you look, uh, triple digits, longer term, we could be setting up for a move to 110, even 120 here on the U.S. dollar index, years away from that. But if you look at what's going on globally, every central bank in the world has taken a baton from our own Federal Reserve and said, hey, we're going to print the night away, folks. We're going to print our way to prosperity by devaluing our currency, making our assets rise in value. Hey, you know what? And the U.S. dollar is going to be the cleanest what did they say? The cleanest dirty shirt in the in the you know a, a sports hamper that's been left out in the sun, uh, moldy, humid sun for I don't know three or four months. So you look at this breakout coming. This is going to be a significant headwind down the road. Uh, you see it even just this past earnings season with 3M and uh, I believe Dupont. Some of their earnings report referring to the currency headwind. These multinationals, when U.S. dollar rises in value. Oh, it's going to make stuff a little more expensive for those foreigners. Also uh, makes less, uh, you know, competition. So that's something to keep in mind there with the U.S. dollar index. Let's look at some charts here at S&P 500 ETF. The spiders remains channelized after the move lower on Monday. So if, if we break over this 2875 level, that's going to set us up for a move back over 210. I'm not sure that's the likelier outcome. We'll see. Support here lies at this trend line. This is 2015 in a nutshell, folks. Boring, dull. It was like watching paint dry. And then August, the swoon brought us down, got us back to, hey, you know what? This market can fall. What a really tremendous rally. Harkening back to the days of the 2011 uh, debt downgrade where we had a similar type move to the downside in August, consolidated, really started to move up into November. But guess what? Precisely at the time we are now, we started to pull back a little bit. You can see this in the middle of November, November 14th of 2011, we started to pull back. Is that what's going to happen here before we proceed up to new all-time record highs? Are we going to come all the way down? There's a lot of different variables here. One thing to watch is the U.S. dollar index. Also, Energy XLE talked about this. Uh, you look at Twitter and stock twits, the trend remains broken here. We've come up, a beautiful bounce off the lows a couple months ago, the end of September. What a robust rally, but we were running out of steam here. And despite the move up, we hit 69.45 today, something like that. 
I think we're going to head lower. The timing is going to be crucial. I even some puts. I'm uh, looking for a move. I locked some of those in yesterday. Also, Microsoft. I got some puts in this name today. You can see the consolidation here, but it's down 1.2%. Beautiful spike up post earnings. Look at this. You could draw a trend line across. This is support. I'm not so sure this earnings gap is going to get filled, but I'm just looking for a little bit more continuation of this downside after hitting multi multi-year highs for microsoft it's growing this is the new apple folks no, no. but a, a stock twits i believe it was Oktoberfest a couple years ago talked about microsoft one of the speakers there and hey it's done well microsoft's doing well but i'm just looking for a small pullback there facebook moving higher today but i think the earnings gap here this gap that we saw last week on the earnings move is going to get filled you can see out of the gate we had a big sell uh recovered those losses and then some closed the day up one of the third percent but I'm looking for Facebook to pull back and close this gap. If you remember back in the middle of September, I got some puts in Facebook. And the stock was over 96. We saw frenzied buying like we saw today. Two days later, was at $92 a share. The next week, under 90. So that's something to keep an eye on. You know, I'm not going to run out of patience. If I believe something's going to pull back, you got to stick to your guns. Let's look at the VXX, which continues to trade lower here. Uh, the XX was down almost 3% on the session. Again, just like the VIX, started day off with so much promise, but then just beaten down all day long. And this really coincided with the market rallying. A couple other charts to look at. Look at Apple. I was talking about this in yesterday's market video, folks. Look at this, still in play. Long-term topping pattern. Look at this <laughs> candle down here. We hit resistance. I talked about this in yesterday's video. This pattern is still playing out. Uh, not as much to sh head and shoulders pattern, more of a, you know, I don't know, is this an owl? Woo you draw a couple of heads. I like, uh, you know, transforming these charts into so something that's more realistic. But if you look, we drop down here, support here is to 1250 for Apple. Actually, this 3% move to the downside turns some options into five, 600% gains. Congratulations there. U.S. Steel, my goodness, a nice little rally, but you see it's bumping along here, this multi-multi-year low. Looks like it's going to break below 10, much like Carl Icahn's favorite here, FCX. Carl Icahn took a position. It looked great. Hopefully, he got out about here because we are starting to really take a turn on FCX. Everybody was lambasting me last year, late last year, talking about FCX. I said it was done. Toast. I talked about it again. Toast. I said, FCX is this year's CLF. Look at this. Uh, last year's CLF. You remember CLF? Let me pull up a chart of CLF. Look at CLF. Similar type chart. Look at it. It was once at $10 back in 2014. Heck, CLF was over $100 back before the financial crisis. Actually, after the financial crisis, too. It was up over $90 down to 5 FCX. Remember, financial crisis. Similar type move. Head and shoulders better breaking down. Sorry, Carl Icahn. Toast is FCX, and it's coinciding with the move down in copper. Copper continues to trade down multi-record, never-before-seen levels. Nobody uses copper anymore. They just use Facebook and Twitter. Speaking of Twitter, has been falling every single day. Today was the first kind of reversal that we've seen since they came out with their hearts. Hearts instead of stars, imagine that. Nobody likes hearts. It's a cruel world we live in. All right, UPPOptionMillionaires.com. Hopefully you bought some puts in FanDuel and DraftKings after the bell. New York says, hey, it's a fantasy site that needs to be shut down. It's gambling. Don't gamble with fantasy sports. UPPOptionMillionaires.com. I'll see you in the chat room. Goodbye.